The Gospel of St. John, chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. The Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him, namely Jesus. Now, there were some Greeks among those who had come up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, Save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everything, everyone, to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. This gospel has many meanings, many lessons for us, insights that we can gather as we read and think and meditate upon these sacred words. First of all, we see that Jesus was famous, that Jesus was loved and accepted by the people, so much so that the Pharisees said to one another, you see, that you, in other words, they, they themselves were gaining nothing. They wanted to get rid of Jesus, but look, the whole world has gone after him. So that was their big concern. And it shows us that Jesus was loved and followed. many people followed him. Then there is another point, and as we go down the gospel, that even those who are not Jews, the Greeks, some of the Greeks, wanted to meet Jesus, and they came up to the feast. And they spoke to one of his disciples, Philip, and Philip went to Andrew. Andrew seems to be the link between Jesus and people. When he first met Jesus, he went to get his brother Peter. He was always the link. Um, Andrew, he does not stand out in the Gospels that much, but is mentioned, when he is mentioned, we see him as bringing people to Jesus. 
he gives us a good lesson of what we could do in our lives, not so much by word, but by our actions and the way we live. Jesus goes on to say the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And by that, of course, he meant that he was going to be crucified because his crucifix, his cross, his sufferings was the basis of his glorification of this crown. And that's why he says, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. So the idea of giving up oneself, um, probably the biggest hindrance in drawing close to God is our own selves our selfishness, our self-centeredness, our pride. And so Jesus says, if we die to ourselves, then we will live. Whoever hates his life, in other words, whoever hates his evil inclinations is going to earn eternal life. The crucifix and the deny, denial of one's selfishness is the road to glory. St. Paul tells us if we suffer with Jesus, we also will participate in his glory. A beautiful gospel, John 12, 20 to 33. If you have time, perhaps you might want to look at the gospel yourself and think about it. God bless you. And until the next time, goodbye.